And a big, big welcome to a special edition of JK Investigates, the future of the monarchy. Now, it's no secret, I'm a very proud monarchist. My own late father worked for the Queen Mother for 40 years, and I've always celebrated and admired the royal family, not just for their service, but for what I believe they symbolise about this great country of ours. But it's fair to say, in the last few years, the crises and controversies have come thick and fast, threatening, in my mind, the greatest institution this country has to offer. And now tonight, with my panel of experts, we'll be exploring the challenges confronting the Crown and whether public confidence is at stake. We'll consider the family's history and how the legacy of empire affects our relationship with the rest of the world today. And later, we'll look to the future, asking whether change really could be on the horizon. Now, the last few years have given Her Majesty's Annus Horribilis a run for its money. Let's just remind ourselves of what's taken place. The royal family, our monarchy, the jewel in our crown. It's been a symbol of stability in unstable times, a global advertisement for everything that makes Britain great. Embodied by no one more than Her Royal Majesty, the late Queen Elizabeth. After seven decades on the throne, the death of the Queen shook the world, raising questions about the royal's next chapter, not just at home, but across the Commonwealth of Nations she had served as head of state since 1953. But despite her impeccable record of grace and dignity, the final years of Queen Elizabeth's reign saw her deal with events that shook the family's very reputation to the core. From 2011, Prince Andrew's association with convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein dealt a profound blow to Buckingham Palace. Allegations that Andrew sexually assaulted Virginia Dufre when she was just 17 swirled, with money exchanging hands to keep the case out of the courts. But that wasn't the only PR disaster the firm had to contend with. Instead, the royal family all became stars in the world's most expensive soap opera. As the Sussexes tried to have their Victoria sponge and eat it, crossing the Atlantic to escape royal life before cashing in on their titles to make millions telling their story. Again and again and again. Let's just remind ourselves how that all panned out. All aboard, we begin the journey at Frogmore, but Harry and Meghan didn't want to live there anymore. So the couple moved across the Atlantic to escape a life which was just too frantic. The controversial Oprah interview caused a storm, leaving the royal family torn. With a Time magazine front cover splash, came even more people they wanted to trash. Then Netflix paid them a handsome sum. So why did they end up looking so glum? And then came Spare, and we all know what happened there. South Park poked fun at the pair too, but we are told they will not sue. Harry broadcast his therapy session, from which he says we can all learn a lesson. So, who else will they offend, and when will this woe commotive end? OK, enough poetry. How about Harry's popularity? In the early noughties, Harry seemed a fine, upstanding royal, literally serving Queen and country in the army and mucking in with public duties too. 80% of people had a positive view. Then along comes Meghan. And despite the acres of positive coverage in the press around the royal wedding, 10% of Harry's fans changed their minds and they didn't change back. Come 2020, the pair announced they were stepping back from the royal family. But get this, as the leaks from Spare came out, his popularity plummeted to 23%. And amongst over 65s, believe it or not, he's now less liked than Prince Andrew. What's next for the world's most famous family is anybody's guess. But if the present is anything to go by, their future won't look much like their past. Right, joining me to discuss this is Royal Editor Robert Jobson, Royal Author and Historian Tessa Dunlop, that'll be fun, and my favourite, yes, she's here, Talk TV <laughs> presenter Julia Hartley Brewer, and live from California, the host of To Die For Daily, Kinsey Schofield, looking beautiful as ever. Thank you. Um, so much to talk about. Let's start on a serious note, um, Robert, with you. Uh, the death of Her Majesty, the 8th of September, 2022. An extraordinary life, and, and somebody said to me, 96, 70 years on the throne, we'll never see the like of it again. It was my old man who said to me many years ago, when she goes, the mystique of the royal family and everything that it stands for will never be the same again. Would you adhere to that? Yeah, I think that's right. I think that, that the moment she died, I mean, very few people would have not reflected upon the, the, their own lives when we saw the passing of the Queen. But, you know, most of us were pretty upset, really, because she stood for something. It was the, the old wartime generation. We were all thinking of our own grandparents as well. I think that, yeah, some of that awe and mystique has definitely gone. Um, 
I think the loss of the Duke of Edinburgh was huge too. Um, but uh, I do believe that the King, in the period since the death of the, the Queen, in the transition up to the coronation, has done a terrific job. I think that they, a lot of the crowds are turning out to see him. And um, I think that uh, he's, he's proved a pretty steadying influence. Um whether, Jules, you're pro or anti the mm. monarchy, and I, I lay my stall out, yours might be different. Mm. That woman was a consistent feature yeah. in all of our lives, oh, yeah. more than our parents and our... I mean, 70 years, yeah. we knew well, we, nothing else. We were in this studio the morning together on, yeah. on air, the morning after the Queen died, and I remember even you know, on the night before, just I think, like, everybody had a little bit of a choked moment. I mean, really quite upset. But, you know, no, I've been a lifelong Republican. But never been anti the Queen because uh, I think I, is it, I think that's what, I think that's what a lot of people mm -hmm. and it's really interesting that you know the polling for King Charles uh, yes it's you know it's 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 gone up you know let's face it there's an entire Buckingham Palace machine geared around you know shoring up his image and his and, and the royal family that's what they have to do now but there are so many people who who said you know they they they're not really sure about the monarchy in the 21st century but their respect for the Queen yeah. and the way she carried out her duties. And I've always said, look, I believe in an elected head of state. Now, lots of people, I know the majority of the people in this country disagree with me. My view is, if she'd ever stood for election, the Queen would have won hands down because she, she carried out her duties with so much just... I mean, such propriety, uh, such uh, distinctness, I mean, and, and such duty. And I just don't think that Charles has got that. I think he wants to be king. We'll, I'm we'll sure talk he wants about Charles king, in a bit, but, but I, I think just... I think we would all agree that what she symbolised, what she gave yeah. to this country... There she was in treetops in Kenya, you know, when she discovered her father had died. It was an extraordinary life, and we will never, ever see the no. like of it again. She broke her own rules, and Philip's rule, where she was bigger than the monarchy, totally yeah. accidentally. Yeah. But popularity for the Queen was greater than for the institution. But let's be honest, we're never going to get such a young, fresh monarch, mm -hmm. somebody who will go with us through decades of change as a constant, as a timepiece. Yeah, I agree. And they had Hollywood appeal. They were stunningly good-looking. They were not only the everyman and woman who had fought in the war, but they also had a bit of a sheen. Photography, the emergence of the mass media. and. Charles is 74, he's a granddad. Yeah, he's... How can you have mass appeal in an era of identity politics? Well, we'll talk, we'll talk about that later. Well, I wanted to just start by saying it yeah. was the end of uh, an era when she died. And, you know, I'm lucky enough to live in Windsor and those scenes were absolutely Epic. extraordinary. Yeah. Uh, let's bring it on. Uh, Robert Jobson, you'll love this. We've talked about the crises the monarchy have faced. Harry and Meghan, of course, January 2020. Uh, they decide that they're departing the UK. We've had Spare, we've had the Netflix documentary. The other day, apparently, she might even run for president. Um, in my world... Of what? Of what? Well, I don't know. Her <laughs> own Archerwell Foundation, probably, if anybody else is left there. In my world, right, they have disrespected the monarchy, and I just nail my colours to the mast right here and now. You want to walk away? I salute you, I respect you. You cannot expect people to understand that the minute you land in another country, you sign a deal worth $100 million, it's not even the money, and your entire life despite the fact you wanted privacy and you wanted yeah. nothing, is absolutely laid out. And they... I would love to know how much pain he caused his grandmother as she was dying. Well, the, the Queen always had a good relationship with Harry, but I dare say, uh, towards the end, that she... I know when he was calling that, you know, he was... He, she wanted him to repair his relationship with his father, and that was in a pretty bad state. But I think, in all honesty, they've done... They've now their colours to the mast. I don't have particularly have an axe to grind against Harry. I knew him, you know, from when he was a little boy, covering the stories for the newspapers, and he was always very, um, you know, he was actually quite a good guy to be on the road with, but it's just, they didn't really give it a very good amount of time. You know, Meghan and Harry, they started very well. I was in Fiji and Tonga and that with them, and they were doing OK, but they'd only just started. When you think of the Queen... Who and, and Philip, they had their issues. There was an incident yeah. you know, where they were right on that first tour of 53 where the, the, the Australian film crew was outside and, and she was throwing cricket, tennis bats and everything at Prince Philip outside and then they filmed it and then they, they asked for the film back. In those days, deferentially, they did hand it back. But um, the, fact, the fact is they didn't give it enough time. I think it's really interesting. Can I, can I just shoot to, to LA? My favourite person, Kinsey Schofield, uh, a, a staunch monarchist, OK, um... When you hear Julia and Tessa say that the monarchy is, you know, changing, and that, I think, is something we all acknowledge, do you see Harry and Meghan as part of the problem? How do you think 
their behaviour impacted on our late Queen? I do, and, you know, I, I respect and I, I do greatly respect Robert, but don't forget that the Queen requested, called and requested that Harry and Meghan see them or see her days before she passed away, and they rejected that offer. Um, so uh, while I, I, you know, know that they had a close relationship, I also think the last few days of her life were probably pretty sad because she'd hoped to see them and they just they opted not to see her. Um, but I do think that they have negatively affected the image of the monarchy, especially in the United States of America, uh, where they are being painted as racist bullies. It's interesting, Jules, isn't it? Racist bullies. Yeah, indeed. I, look, I think the main thing about Harry and Meghan is if, if, they, if they, as a couple, had said, look, this isn't a life for us, we want a private life, we don't want to have the media intrusion... This Stand by, you're going to get grief no, on your no, left. No, but if they said that and they and they had gone off and lived a quiet what life, yes. they got plenty of money, they got millions in the bank, they could go they could gone off and done that, I would have had the utmost respect. And me. I've always felt, I genuinely, I wouldn't wish being on the royal family on my worst enemy. I think to be born... There's no chance of you being on no, the royal I don't family. Think I think it's a really, really hard life, especially with the media that we are now. However, what they said to do, we wanted to do was, uh, we're not going to do any of the duty, we're not going to do the cutting ribbons and all that. What we're going to do is we're going to take all the best bits, we're going to take the money and the fame and the I HRH and the and titles And we want our, our children, kids to have titles, then, titles that we disagree yeah. with the whole and thing. Then, completely and, and, with you, and, Julia. And we want to be invited to the coronation and yes. all that. And, the, and then we're just going to go off and make money. And, you, and they're only making money no one's going to be paying a two-bit actress like Meghan no. for, for these sort of sums of money. Oh, that was brutal. It's because it's but because she's right, she, Tessa to Dunlop. Sex, I think what we need to own here is that oh. Harry's part of the monarchy. He was born, he was reared in this weird, gilded cage. We sort of prod and look... But you're, you do this every up, time. Like, gilded, no, weird true. cage that true. they asked to right. leave. So as, stop but, using the gilded cage as, to make money. As one of your favourite royals, Kate Middleton, will tell you, 90% of our brain is formed before the age of five. Harry, once a prince, always a prince. He can leave his gilded cage, but he's not trained to be a plumber. He's trained as a prince with all that entitled expectation. To, so to expect him to walk away from the institution and then not drop a couple of bombs, how much money happen. does he need? I mean, realistically, how much money do you need Why? to live on? Because he's competing with his brother. We know that from the title. I'm sorry, I'm so this with JHB. It's this, hypocritical, You cannot Nessa, say you like But you the will not family. answer the question. Hear what, me out. What question? Julia is so spot on in yes. my mind. I don't know what Robert thinks. Only She's if you are brave enough or you say, my life, I don't want to be in that gilded cage, please wait. Right. We all go, do you know what? Yeah. What a brave, right. brave man. Mm. Go to California, bring up your yeah. kids with your wife, we would salute you. How are you supposed to be taken seriously by the people of this country mm -hmm. where you sit in California dropping bombs on the royal family and only, with respect, Tessa Donlock, making money out of slagging off the very institution that you wanted to leave? Go and make your money elsewhere.